You're welcome back. Um, we, we did say that we are going to go to the Niger Delta, as it were, to bring you uh, what is happening there, because we like to touch all parts of Nigeria. That's why if there is someone vying for a position from anywhere, we bring them here. We've brought people from other states to talk to us about what they intend to do to change the political landscape and make life better for the citizenry. And that is what we're going to do in the Niger Delta today. So we'll talk, first of all, with... Uh, uh, about um, the Niger Delta, uh, we have just had the new chair of the NDDC and what the marked difference will be. And then we'll also talk about what the governor of River State said about choosing a presidential candidate, anointing a presidential candidate, which maybe may not be PDP. Because a lot can happen between now and January, maybe the reconciliation that we've been looking for or the party needs right now will be done by January. We don't know. But by January, he's going to uh, announce who he intends to support for the presidency uh, come 2023. We also are going to be looking at a state in Niger Delta, and that is actually Delta State. To discuss this with me is a media consultant and also a public affairs analyst, Mr. Theophilus Akatuba. Mr. Akatuba, welcome to the show. All right. Um, good morning uh, to you. Good morning, uh, Nigeria. It's a pleasure to be on this channel with you. Okay. Um, right after the, the, the exit... Oh, for a long time, people have been clamoring for uh, the N uh, NDDC board to be constituted and to have someone lead that uh, board. Now we have Loretta Onoche as the board of the NDDC. And we're wondering if she has come on board, and there is a board now because you can't have a chair without a board, what will that marked difference be uh, between when that board was not constituted and now? What are we expecting of the board and the chair in per particular? Well, thank you very much. I think the first thing is that the, the board is in place or it's um, the organ of an organization that help uh, to supervise, to have what you call a supervisory responsibility over the day-to-day -day administration of the organization. The board sets uh, the, we call it the strategic agenda in collaboration with the management. And then the board determines the, the quality, the operations of the chief executive and his, uh, his lieutenants to ensure that the objectives of the owners of the company is met, which is the owners are Nigerians. For example, is directly the chairman of the board represents the interest of the president and the political party that is in governance so that the objective of that party for the organization is realized. And so the difference is that the it's coming late, but the objective is to ensure that the goals, the aspiration of the president are achieved. Don't forget that the NDDC has been going through forensic auditing and uh, to investigate how they have spent all the monies that have been put there. There's nothing wrong with the NDDC except for the fact that most of its resources have been mismanaged and a lot of it have not been used for the purpose and the objective to achieve the objective of developing the Niger Delta and providing solutions to where there are many problems. So the difference is that, of course, the, the, a representative of the president is now sitting on the board and overseeing the affairs of the board. It's expected that whoever is the managing director or the, the leader of the organization on the day to day today will be able to listen and work with the board to achieve the big objectives. He is not going to be the first board chairman in that place. Uh, there used to be a board chairman, there used to be a board before maybe a lot of things went the way they, they went. And when this forensic audit was done on NDDC, we saw that there was a very, very massive rot in the system. There was very massive looting in the system, even with the board. So I am just wondering what significance it will it will bring to that except that okay someone from the presidency uh, which we have seen before is there to supervise 
how can we hold them? How can we, how can, how can there be a difference? I'm still asking the same question because if at the time we had a board before, there was that kind of corruption, what will be done to make sure that this time it will be better? The structure of these organizations have always been the same. But you also know that the people that are placed in these offices make a lot of difference. And so what is expected is that Loretta Anoche, someone that has spoken very loudly and consistently about anti-corruption and who is a, an adherent promoter of the president and the president's ideals, so her choice for that office is to look closely with the eye of the president and supervise that agency into the future. I believe it's coming late, but let's see what can happen within the shortest possible time. I'm sure that the audit will be implemented and all the recommendations and what the findings and whoever needs to be punished, you will see some action will take place shortly. That's what I expect in the minimum. Okay. But the big picture is to see the NDC, NDC does what it's set up to do, which it has not done very well for the many years. It has been um, a settling ground for politicians, shamefully and disgracefully, to the disadvantage of the Niger Delta people. They, unfortunately for that part of Nigeria, they have not been lucky enough to have very good leaders, uh, very good uh, politicians. I don't call them leaders. Take note of my words. Leaders are not politicians. Politicians are seekers of public office to represent the people, not because they are natural leaders. Leaders indeed work in the interest of people at the sacrifice and at the heart of their own lives. So we are finding leaders in the midst, but majority of the politicians are not leaders. Well, some people have also argued that uh, Loretta Onochi could have, couldn't have been the best choice. Uh, I'm, yes. I'm sorry to hear you. Yeah, some people have said that Loretta couldn't have been the best choice uh, or people to choose. If, if they had to choose somebody, it couldn't have been Loretta. And I don't know why they said that, but I don't know what you think, because um, she may not have had... Some say she may not have had uh, the experience to do that, aside from being a loyalist to the APC and to the president, like you have pointed out. Uh, how do you assess the capacity of Loretta uh, based on whatever office she has held before? Well, the, it could be true that she might not have the, the broad and requisite uh, academic credentials, which a lot of Nigerians... Uh, believe in and rely on the lot. Uh, we have a country where people struggle to appendage their name, PhDs and doctors, and at the end of the day, they do not make any meaningful impact in society. Nigeria parades some of the best academically qualified men and women, but you see the quality of service that the citizens are enjoying. And so to that extent, I understand where they are coming from when they look at qualification, but the president in this time We'll be looking at an individual that has the capacity to manage men and resources. Loretta's exposure is adequate to be a board chairman. She's politically astute. She's worked in the presidency. She understands the dynamics. And she's quite radically minded enough to hold that office because of what has happened to her people. She's from that region. She understands as people have very qualified ones, but outcome. So they must give the president the opportunity to let this chairman play her role. Mm. A lot of people, you know, I believe we are moving into an era where we must discuss, we must, uh, we must play down on academic qualification. We must play up the natural gift of men to provide leadership. You know, so that's why when I hear people laugh and uh, uh, jest at her, she told us of her qualification. It was very, very sound that she has that ability to manage at that level you need ability to manage men and women resources to achieve a given goal you don't need to have the technical you know nitty-gritty detail to do that work so i think she's qualified and able to do that job that's what i think 
and we must give her the opportunity to play. And she represents a very important constituency, the women constituency. We must give more women opportunities to head boards because of the fact that they have more capacity to manage things. I think so. And I believe uh, the president has done well in her choice. Okay. In his choice of Loretta. Okay. Apart from, apart from Loretta and all that around her, uh, what are some of the things that the people of Niger Delta complain about that you think the NDDC should address because they could have addressed them and didn't, uh, whatever reason there was. But what are some of these concerns of the Niger Delta that you think the NDDC should be looking to address going forward? Yeah, NDDC is supposed to play a complementary role, you know, complementary role to what state governors, local government are doing and other organizations like the super tech, for example. And this is a complementary, it's actually a federal government intervention agency to help the Niger Delta where there are gaps, major projects that the governors or projects that connect uh, states, the Niger Delta states together. Major roads, major projects that benefit across states. That's what I believe the Niger Delta was set up for. But over the years, it has lost its mandate, and they've been doing, you know, very little, little things that local governments should be doing. And that has strained the organization and led to so much corruption. Many abandoned projects. So the, the Niger Delta people are complaining of lack of impact in the big things that the Niger Delta Commission should be doing. They are doing small things. You see them doing cassava uh, in some rural areas, mini roads in towns and villages. There are major projects that need to be done. The East-West Road also need the attention, the support, the complementary support of the, of the NDDC. The NDDC, you know, for many years, could not even complete their headquarters until recently. You can see that a lot of the resources of the people, the Niger have been filled. That's why the president said so much has gone in this agency. But not much can be seen as evidence. So the people of Niger Delta have a common cry of not feeling the impact of the NDDC in relation to the mandate it's supposed to be executed. And so that's, it's not about the lack of expertise. There is not a lack of people, but the fact that the NDDC is just, is just a waste. It's, uh, it's a source of filtering away the resources meant for the development of Niger Delta. Look at the many years. The Niger Delta still remains one of the most backward and underdeveloped regions in Nigeria. I tell you this because if you compare the what's on the ground with you know? Yeah. So, was I caught there? Yeah. You, you will agree with the Niger ahead. Delta, you know, has not done well. Did I lose, did, did you lose me? I got a call on this phone. Okay. So, uh, Niger Delta expects a lot of things to be done. And sometimes when you say uh, things are not being done and you mention some of these things, it seems like uh, an indictment on the governors in the Niger Delta. We need to just know uh, briefly uh, why at all there was this need to set up the Niger Delta so that Niger Delta Commission, because uh, some people will need this to understand why we are even talking about the NDDC in the first place, because we don't have the Development Commission in other regions of the country. There was a need for this, and it will help us to understand why uh, what is happening is happening and why the people even have a, a right to complain about some things that naturally it's supposed to be either the federal government or the state governments that should be doing. Just briefly. Yeah, uh, there is an, a, a, a development commission recently set up for the Northeast, which is a new one. That's new. Very new. Uh, it was set up in response to the fact that the Boko Haram menace and this insurgency damaged a lot of the places. A region where, majority, where most of the resources of this country uh, you know, come from. 
the oil resources. And so that region needs special attention. This is the reason why the government, the, 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 name, the government established it. And if it is uh, the governors of the state, typical of the way they govern their individual states, have looked on, you know, and also benefited from what has happened in the Niger Delta Commission. Every one of them have their own quota. They have people they send in there to get contracts, contracts that were never executed or at best were executed shoddy, shoddy projects, not that will not endure. And the monies of the NDDC are scattered and used to settle political friends, even across the Niger Delta, including the North. A lot of Northerners are also part of the Niger Delta beverage because the people there have lost every sense of, of responsibility to their people. You know, they do not love their people, many of the Niger Delta politicians. Uh, they are, a lot of them are very backward in thinking, in orientation. Uh, they are not, uh, they went to school, but they do not understand the meaning of development. Uh, they do not know that if they fail to develop the Niger Delta, it's to their own disgrace, detriment, and failure, you know, because your region must reflect the wealth that there is. And if Niger Delta is still what it is today, every politician that have passed through the Niger Delta in the past and those still seeking office should cover their faces in shame and, uh, and do everything to cover up for the loss, for the gap, because the governors, those in the past, current governors, you, you recently, you heard of Wicked's revelation when Wicked said certain amounts of money have been paid to all the NDDC Niger Delta governors. Can you believe it that Delta State, where I come from, the governor did not announce to the state that such monies have arrived. The governor did not tell the people that, oh, the money, have, we have got it. This is where we are putting the money. We are going to do this project with the money. He didn't tell the people about the money until Wiki revealed it. Wiki said, all of these great projects that I'm doing, do you think I got the money from FAC? No. I got the money from a large... From backlog of money that's supposed to have been paid to us under the PDP that was not paid. The APC wicked, supposedly wicked Buhari has paid. From there I got all this. But Delta did not hear of it. Many of the states, they didn't tell their people. It was now they started explaining. This is a very simple example of the, the, de the decrypt of, I can't, I'm looking for the right word to describe the uncivilized governance that the Niger Delta people are experiencing from day to day. And it has to stop. They have so underdeveloped the people. Media, for example, media is not popular in a state like Delta. Deltas do not have a television channel that they all watch so that they can even interrogate their governor. There is no mechanism that, with which you can hold their governor accountable. They made it sure. They made sure. There is no media. The media landscape is it's, it's fragmented. You can, at best, the radio in Wari won't get to, from Wari won't get to Ugeli. The radio frequency in Ugeli won't get to Wari. So there is no consistency of action. There's no way you can make a broadcast and the entire state will hear of it. That's one way they have consistently made the people voiceless. You know, that's why a lot of us don't know what's going on in many of the states especially in the Niger Delta area, the very dark region of very corrupt and poor, poorly oriented individuals who do not understand development. They don't love the people. They, they oppress the people with the little knowledge they have. And they think that that way is the best way to go. It takes a few elites to develop a society. So uh, Loretta is going there. She's made a lot of noise. She's promoted the president. She's an advocate of anti-corruption. Let's see what she's going to do with the NDDC. Okay. With all the things you're talking about, Niger Delta, it's, it's good that you said that you're from Delta State yourself. I would have said, Ogana, wow. <laughs> but, but it's good you're talking about your people and with that kind of passion. But finally, before we take a break and go to other matters, um, I'd just like to, to know, some people also have said, why wait for conflict 
uh, before you establish things that are supposed to develop uh, the country and any section of the country. For instance, the Niger Delta uh, Development Commission was established because there were oil spills, there were agitations within the Niger Delta, and so many other things that if they hadn't established that uh, board for intervention, like you said, maybe it would have deteriorated into something else. And then now, in the Northeast, there is a board established because there is Boko Haram that has lasted for over 10 years in that place. Um, and people are saying, why not just establish these things if you know that they are going to lead to development so that the Northwest will have its own, uh, the Southeast will have its own, the Southwest will have its own, and every, every zone in the country will have its own. Are you also a proponent of that? Oh, well, you must uh, agree with me that um, naturally you have three tiers of government and they should be adequate in dispensing service and development in their various areas. But all these kind of agencies were set up as a response to a special need or in the course of doing business or for exploring the exploration of the oil. They now discovered that the government state goes are not able to manage the degradation. And the federal government, in his mind, thought that, okay, a special agency through which funds are channeled could do, uh, could respond to these special needs. Uh, that is the thought, that's the imagination. So, and it was set up for that purpose. Remember, derivation was not always there, too. So, they also came up as a result of, you know, when life is a progressive uh, situation. As you move along, you discover, okay, can we, how do we respond to this need? So these are responses to, to developing challenges as the life as business, the nation rolls forward. It, it, it's, it's, we can't create a commission for every region when there is really no special need. You can't create any special commission for the Southwest when there is no special reason for it. The actions of the governors and the local government, uh, uh, government, uh, uh, systems should be enough to go about the day-to-day -day dispensing of services and development of these areas. So, now that I have a place, and if you understand it well, there must be what you call uh, the federal government's capacity to respond to cross-border developmental needs, cross-border. They will be a bridge between Delta and Biosa or a certain developmental requirement of you know so this is this is this is why i think it's we can't just set up commissions everywhere for example the north no one envisaged insurgency to the extent that we suffer so now there will be need for that agency to help fast track development across that region for the kind of destructions that have taken place over the years okay it's like after post-war development needs okay so uh, for me i believe that um it is not so much about whether there is, it's so much about the, the people and their quest for the development. A lot of us that we are in petition with the world, many of our people, many of our politicians, they fail to understand the competition with the rest of the world. If you do not develop your country, the world will take advantage of you. People are crying about brain drain. And I wonder why are you crying about brain, brain drain when you fail to develop? Your people will seek a better place. Every human being is a progressive animal. It will look for where else is better. And if your neighbor is making his own compound better and your compound remain undeveloped, your children will naturally stray there to play because it's better there, safer there. Okay. So uh, Nigerians should not be crying. Oh, Nigerians are moving out of this country in droves. And they are moving out today because 10 years ago, we didn't do what we should do. 20 years ago, we did not do what we should do. Okay. If we did what we should do 20 years ago, we won't have graduates that will not have jobs. Okay, Mr. We Mr. have Mr. not Mr. done. If we build yes. the, if we develop our electricity many years ago, we have companies coming here to, 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 to invest and build companies. Most of the industrial parks will not turn to churches and mosques as we see them today. Go uh, to a let, industrial let's area, let's or by it. industrial area, all have turned. The, most of the buildings have been converted to churches. Let's drop it here. You know, Mr. in the I was in worried recently. Many Mr. of Kajima, the iconic just... places are now springing up as worship centers. 
Let's drop we it here for now. For now, Mr. Mr. Akatuba, just just so a that moment. That um, we, we need to just take a break and return because we have two other very vital things that we need to discuss. Uh, now we've talked about NDDC and mostly uh, about how it has been uh, administered as it is over the years. And it has to also do with the governors who are in those states because uh, if they are up and doing and looking into the affairs of the NDDC as well because it concerns them, the things we heard about NDDC, we may not have heard about them. But we'll take a short break. And when we return, we'll continue with other issues like uh, uh, what the utterances of Governor Nyeksom Wike and also what is happening in Delta State between Omoa Gege and Okowa, who is the vice presidential candidate of the PDP. We have uh, Mr. Akatuba, Theophilus Akatuba, a media consultant, rather, and uh, a public affairs analyst talking with us about the politics in Niger Delta. We've started with something that is more federal than local, uh, that is the NDDC. Right now, let's go to what really is happening in specific states of uh, the Niger Delta. Uh, we're going to be talking about two states in particular. And the first and short one is uh, uh, what the governor, Nyesom Wike, said recently. He said that in January of 2023, he's going to announce who his preferred candidate for the presidency is. Mr. Katuba, you are still there. And uh, let's just take an assessment of what uh, Governor Nyesom Wike said. He is PDP. We shouldn't be asking him who is going to um, uh, support, but he's saying that he's going to announce who he's going to support, which may not be a PDP presidential candidate. What's your assessment or what's your take on that announcement? Well, uh, Wiki has been very active in his uh, politics in the twilight of his regime. Uh, he has been very vociferous. You know, when a man has never lost election and Wiki lost the first election, he has not been able to acclimatize with losing. You know, so this is first one of the things Wiki is suffering from. Within the political party, they skimmed him out. So he couldn't believe it. And uh, he also thought that the governors of the Niger Delta, some of them betrayed him and betrayed the common understanding that the presidency should come to the South, especially the governor of my state, Okoa, who was the host of, that, uh, of one of those meetings where this resolution was reached among them, who, understanding this, accepted the position of vice president to give credibility to the ticket, the offending ticket, which is Atiku, and Wiki since that time has been relentless in consolidating within the Niger, within the river state and therefore damaging the chances of the PDP in the Niger Delta. Because with that revelation that he made, what he sought to do was to damage the influence, the credibility of the governors the PDP governors, which are more in the Niger Delta. So this latest announcement is only to let you know that he's coming to let us know that it was not going to work for Atiku. Because if Wicked goes for Atiku, it damages his own credibility because he has said too much against a North president taking over another, taking over from another, from President Buhari. So his argument is surely going to tell us someone else, and that person I do not know, but I believe it will not be Atiku, because if, it's, if it goes for Atiku, it means whatever he has been fighting for has only been a selfish agenda in, instead of what he promoted uh, and not what he actually promoted to the, to the people to gain their support and their followership. So, he has already announced that. We will wait to see what political card that Wiki is playing now, because this is called the last card. The elections are already here. Mm. It's going to tell us where the presidency, his interest is in the presidential election. He already told the people that 
PDP should wave rivers. That's where the PDP people are telling me that how will the people go into the, the, the polling booth and voting all others and therefore be able to identify the presidency and make another choice that they are likely to vote the same party in all the choices they are going to make for House of Rep, for Senate, and the presidency, because all the ballot papers are likely to be given to you at the same time. So the PDP are hoping against hope that Wicked's gospel or Wicked's message will not, uh, will not go that far to hurt their chances. So let's wait for Wicked to tell us who he thinks his people will vote for. Don't forget, the state has a PDP structure, so a lot of them might not follow him, but only he will get to know that when the results are out. <laughs> Apart from the fact that this gives other parties um, some kind of leverage, some kind of advantage, because if there's infighting in a party that is uh, at the helm of affairs, other people will stand to gain. Uh, is this good for our democracy? Because it might encourage other people in other parties to start doing the same things when they are hurt. In fact, we saw that uh, in 2015 or 2014. So is it good for the democracy or... There are too many strong men. And when you have too many strong men in political parties like we have now, it's not good. Yeah. Mr. Katuba, we could hear you, but I don't know what is happening on your end. Uh, as soon as you're able to reconnect, we're going to bring you back on. Uh, gentlemen and ladies, we've been talking about uh, the Niger Delta and its politics. It's majorly between APC and PDP. The Niger Delta is made up of states that are majorly uh, PDP. And until recently, Cross River State was a PDP state. Uh, now, Ben Ayade, the governor of Cross River State, moved over to the APC and made the state automatically a, an APC state. But predominantly is PDP. But now we also have a sitting deputy Senate president in the person of Omar Gige, who is also standing for an election in Delta State. But right now, we're just talking about what Wike said. And the question to Mr. Katuba, who I learned has just rejoined us, is that, is this a good thing for democracy or is it a bad thing? We've seen it in 2014. Now we're seeing it again. Briefly, Mr. Katuba, please. Yes, I said, it's not, it's, I don't say, I, I, it's neither good nor bad. It is politics, part of the interest. Mm. Uh, in politics, you contest for power. And you use all the capacity and all the resources available and the advantages that you have to win power. And so Wiki, who had thought that the entire scenario favored him, having lost at the primaries, and he has not been able to understand or learn how to adapt to losses, because he's not very good. He has not lost election in the past. So being the first time, we must understand why he's fighting the way he's fighting. But whether it's good for democracy or bad for democracy, what I can assure you, it brings excitement to the party. Yeah, that much. I it agree. brings excitement to the game. And that's what makes people get excited to follow it. Because if it's a docile campaign, if it's something without intrigues, I can assure you, many of the citizens, it's just like a boxing match. The boxers will have to excite the followers by saying that they will beat they will be the one that, that the game will not be more than one minute. The one that even talks the most becomes a loser at the end of the fight. So you must excite your followers. So Wiki is doing well, like, uh, like fighting and much. creating the kind of excitement. Just like you asked, some people will go into the poly booths to distance themselves from the PDP. Some people will do that. They will choose among the other parties for the sanity of their own mind. Because to them, what manner of party is this that cannot put his house in order? A lot of people, people lose a chunk of votes in that area if, in, if, because of that consideration. No doubt, okay. there will be some minuses. Okay, like I said, I, I like the, the, the part of the excitement. It's, it's really good. And it beats me how, where politicians get the kind of confidence that they exhibit. Some of them, oh well, let me not even go into that. But we have another interesting uh, thing happening in, the, in Delta State. The excitement you, you mentioned, I think that drama will be in Delta State. 
Delta State is a PDP state, and it has the deputy Senate president there, and it also has the deputy, let me use deputy now because we are using deputies, uh, presidential candidate for the PDP there, the two biggest parties at the moment in Nigeria. How are the chances of APC taking over Delta State in 2023, knowing how powerful these two men who are contesting on different platforms and different capacities, how is it possible or what are the chances of especially APC taking over uh, the reins in Delta State in 2023? It, uh, uh, thank you very much. The PDP has governed that state for 24 years, obviously, and have repeatedly been, uh, have repeatedly been pronounced winners of election. The generality of Deltans are fed up with the PDP. If it were to be in the past where the electoral regulatory framework, you know, gives room for, for malpractices and manipulation, the PDP would have won the election right now, would have told you that it's still the PDP. But with the new electoral regulatory framework and the fact that the actual votes of the people who would count and who showed up for the election and got accredited is within that ambit that this election will be decided. It will be a, a major wonder if the PDP wins the election. Reason is that the PDP has failed the people in a very wicked way. You know, you can fail with a godly mind. You can fail with by genuinely failing after the fact that you made effort and they did not work. Faithfully fail the people. Fail the people by making them, malnourishing them with enlightenment. They are, they are enlightenmently malnourished by the PDPs many years of backward governance. You know, backward means a deliberate, not, not having, we're talking now. Many state governors are ending their regime with, with, with inauguration of projects that they have been investing on. But my state, Delta, where I come from, <laughs> there's nothing to inaugurate. The presidential candidate of, the vice presidential candidate of the PDP is a liability to the PDP. Because Deltans are so unhappy with him that they will ensure he does not get there because, one, he is regarded as a betrayer of the common interest of the South of Nigeria to have teamed up with an offending ticket of a tickle who want to take over for another Fulani, who want to take over from another. Now, if the PDP is disliked, will they vote for Omar Agege because they dislike they dislike uh, the PDP. That is automatic because among all the candidates, Omar Gege is the most visible, the most qualified and experienced politician in the midst. The candidate of the PDP, Oboewori, is inexperienced. Another local champion who is very unexposed. In fact, his background is so poor that within the PDP, they have got to court to say that he's not qualified. They have big holes in his, in his credentials. And in fact, when he speaks to you, you will see that even if it should have been better, I don't criticize people for lack of uh, speaking good English because that's not our mother tongue. Even if he speaks in our mother tongue, he does not exhibit any wisdom, knowledge. That's how bad our state is. Someone of such low, in, low, no, low IQ quotient became the speaker of the state. You can imagine the quality of laws that were made in the House of Assembly to the extent that monies were brought in from the federal government and this same man, who is now going to be governor, connived with the, with the, with the gov governor to use the money to fund the Tiku's campaign. So for that, there's a liability on the PDP. Omar Agege is going to benefit from that because of a lot of things that are visible that he has influenced the NDDC, instead of using the monies, the contracts 
for, for his own benefit. Every community within the central has a proof of NDD. I would have taken photographs and shared with you of what I saw in my state just 10 days ago while I was in the state. NDDC projects in that town, you know, influenced by Omar Agege. So that is that. Let me now tell you, for the presidency, the Niger Delta people have been so, you know, deceived by PDP's propaganda to, to driving so much hatred for President Buhari by extension to the APC. So the APC is actually hated by the people, and for which reason they'll tell you fulanization, Islamization. These are the agenda. This is just the PDP's way of holding in bondage the people of the Niger Delta. They demonize the North. They tell the North that all the oil blocks are owned by the Northerners. All the oil blocks have come, they have oppressed you. They, they, they deceive them with these repetitions. And so they hold APC in odious, so in, in, in negative light. Now, this is what Omar Agege will struggle with, which we have already started overcoming because of these revelations. And then when you come out of that, the presidency, Tinubu has made some inroad again because of his strides there. And so, it seems to be everywhere you go in terms of the governorship. But we come out to real voting time within the next one month. A lot of the dynamics will change. And I see APC doing well, even the presidency. Because what I see there right now is that the people are just misinformed. And since we don't have enough media to recalibrate their mind, it becomes a door-to-door -door campaign, speaking to groups and people so that the word of of mouth information will go wide in the Delta. Yes. Uh, whenever we hear that someone has experience in politics in Nigeria, it means, by extension, that that person has once upon a time been a member of the ruling class, which is PDP, the ruling uh, party that was there for the 24 years that you're talking about, which means Omoya Gigi has a, a PDP foundation if I'm not mistaken. So how exactly is it going to be fresh air to the people of Delta State? Uh, Omar Gege is not fresh. He was in the PDP, so he understood the PDP. He understood the modus operandi of the PDP to underdevelop the state. So he has been finding ways to upturn that party. He has contested them in several contests. And in each time, the PDP will return maximum vote for themselves. If you don't know it, in the time past, PDP will pay their own agent and pay the agent of the other parties and make sure that they all collaborate with them to ensure that the maximum number of registered voters in an area is declared for them. And the most minimum is given to the nearest party. That has been the election. Elections have been written in majority of the places in Delta. And when you go to court, they have the resources to ensure that the judiciary is bought. So Omar Gege is Omar actually Gege relying while all the on the new happening. electoral regulatory framework. Because with that, the actual votes will count. And the real choice of the Delta will, for the first time, be very, very will, be, will be clear. They will know that PDP has long lost its position as the state party, as the party loved by the people. They will know in this election. So I have confidence, and I've done my spot check. I've gone around from all the lot of the places to do spot analysis of people's opinion. I know that the PDP, for any reason, must be changed. First, for underdeveloping the state. Two, for stealing their monies. And with the latest, with latest revelation as the closest evidence. And finally, there is need for a change so that a fresh group of governance, fresh level of governance, a civilized governance, will be in the state for the first time in their history. Yeah, I was just wondering what he was going to be telling them because... Um... They might ask him the question, when they were rigging, when PDP was rigging, results were being written, you were there. 
maybe you were taking decisions as well, and now you say you are a changed man or what? Because if the PDP destroyed Delta State, it means that Amoagege at that time was also a part of this destruction. And I do not know the gospel he will be preaching right now. That's why I was asking you that question. Maybe there are things that you that's why to, to, to point to that's why I told specifically. Amoagege is, is, um, is a politician. If you can't come, it's like Nigeria. Is there any politician in this country? Just a few who did not start politics with PDP as one of the major political parties. In the Delta today, you can't be anything if you do not carry, or have anything to do with government, if, if you do not carry a card of the party. They force you, they tell you, it's one of the things you must do. And so Ovio Maagegi over the years have been trying to win himself away. And you can see that he moved away from that party and Delta for the first time, especially uh, of the robo extract, got the highest political office in the land, moving away from the PDP. The PDP could not deliver us to the center at that kind of you know, uh, level of, of, of participation in national politics. They have continually done things in a way that they think that place they occupy is the beginning and the end of life. And therefore, all the people have to be kept so low so that all, most intellectuals of the state are not in the state. They left the state because they simply cannot find where to interact with governance. So Omar Gege came out of it. And since that time, look at what he has done with his office as deputy senate president. Whatever he has done within his capacity is highly commendable. And the people of the state, especially in Delta Central, can, and even those out of the Delta Central, one way or the other, he first project and spend his resources to ensure the other that was in the community. They told me some transformers, they had stable electricity because of your market, they gave transformers, supplied them a lot of transformers that the electricity distribution companies could not meet up with. So there is so much. I understand what you mean, but even in any revolution, it is only those within the system that become the revolutionary leaders. So it's not a matter to say because he was there, he simply cannot see the light and say that, no, we must not go in this direction. It's among the citizens of a, of a state that maybe in Nigeria, it's still from Nigerians that revolution will come from. The change we're looking for is within us. Okay. We will get them from aliens. Okay, let me turn you to a teacher now as we wrap up. Um, the name that we've been calling uh, I've heard it behind the scene, but let it be some form of education. What's the real pronunciation of this man that we're talking about? Is it Omoa Gege? Ovie. 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 The word Ovie is king. No, no, I'm not, I'm not even concerned about the Ovie. I'm concerned about whether it is Omoa Gege like a, a Gege boy or, or it's, it's pronounced Omoa differently. Gege. Hmm? Sorry? It's Omoa Gege. Same. Yeah. Same like that. Okay, because I've heard people say Ovio Omar Gigi and all that. <laughs> it's all right. Now we have learned that we've always been right because some people uh, said that that was not the correct pronunciation. So today I had a, a Delta man, so why not just ask him on live television so that people get to know? It doesn't seem to be such a Delta name. It's Omar Gigi is not a Delta name. It's actually a derivation of imported name. Oh. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, <laughs> that's that's some learning we've done now. Anyway, uh, thank you so much, Mr. Akatuba, for coming on the show. It's been very enlightening talking with you today. Thank you for being a part of it. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Merry Christmas to you. Okay, uh, we've been talking with Mr. Theophilus Akatuba. Uh, he's a media consultant and a public affairs commentator. We've been talking about the politics in the Niger Delta region and since you need to go for shopping today, I know that we have to end early. Uh, it's been lovely being with you all this while. This is not the last time we're coming on the run-up. Next week, we will return again. Now, it's time to say goodbye on the show and then take the news and every other thing will follow. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. It's been lovely. Merry Christmas to you. <laughs>